Hello everyone. I'm going to spend a little bit of time today going over the new academic program coordinator policy and the forms that you'll need to fill out and the process that you'll need to uh, use to get these through. This is part of our uh, compliance with SAC COC and uh, on the email that you received, you received a copy of the academic program coordinator policy. This policy was vetted through uh, the Council of Directors. Uh, the councils, both academic and graduate council, and ultimately approved by Provost Mosher. Um, and so uh, I'm not going to go through all the details of the policy. You can, you can read that, but we start off with a rationale for the policy. And one of the things that we have to do in, for SAC COC standard 6.2.C uh, is identify or assign appropriate responsibility for program coordination. Um, our policy is pretty straightforward. Uh, when we're talking about program coordinator uh, in this policy for these, these terms, this is, this is a SAC COC term, okay? So it can include a variety of different position titles at the university. It could be a faculty lead. It could be a uh, program director, whatever the case may be. But it's all about academic programming. Non-academic programming at the university is not included in this definition. So keep that in mind. Uh, so. Uh, we have to identify a program coordinator for all academic programs, emphasis areas, certificates, badges, and standalone minors. So anything that's on our program inventory is going to have to be, uh, have somebody identified as a program coordinator. Uh, just to let you know, more, uh, a single person can be a program coordinator for more than one program. It may make sense for that to be the case. You may have a program that has an undergraduate degree and a master's degree and you want to assign uh, that individual to be the coordinator of both of them uh, for whatever reason that is strictly up to you and you can do that um, program coordinators have to be qualified to teach at all levels within the program for which they are assigned coordinator responsibilities and for that you'll need to look at the uh, our faculty credentials and qualifications manual for details about how people are qualified to teach um, our program coordinators can either be tenure stream or teaching track faculty. Uh, they need to have received a promotion and rank at the university. Uh, there are exceptions allowed to that, uh, but those exceptions will have to be approved by the dean of your college. So I'll talk to you a little bit about that when we get to the approval forms. Uh, Program coordinator responsibilities need to be a part of the faculty member's expected duties. We're including this in, this in the policy because we don't want program coordinator duties to become uh, add-ons to an already full schedule for a particular faculty member. So, um, you know, it's got to be something that you're willing to uh, have them spend, uh, you know, a good chunk of time um, focusing on. And, and as such, they need to have that as their expected duties. Uh, it needs to be a part of their annual evaluation. Uh, and I will keep track of uh, the program uh, coordinator's inventory and we'll review it every September. And uh, the term of appointment for a program coordinator is at your discretion. So school directors, if you want your program coordinator to be a long-standing program coordinator, that's fine. As long as they're doing a good job and, and you're happy with the work that they're doing, that, that's perfectly fine. You may assign somebody to be a program coordinator, something happened and you decide to take them off that role uh, fairly quickly. That's, that's fine too. That's, that's, that's at your discretion. Whoever you've reappointed though in that role, you'll need to complete this process for each and every program coordinator. So uh, there are some things uh, to be uh, SAC COC compliant that all program coordinators need to have some responsibility for and these are listed on these program coordinator appointment forms that I'll talk about in just a moment but there are three main points for all program coordinators that is a program coordinator uh, is responsible for monitoring the academic quality of a program uh, they are responsible for coordinating the assessment of the program that doesn't mean that they are necessarily responsible for doing all of the assessment uh, but they are responsible for coordinating that assessment and they are uh, responsible for working with stakeholders to maintain curricular relevance so they should be the ones who are making sure that the curriculum of that particular program is meeting the demands of 
uh, the stakeholders at large. Are students being attracted to the major? Are uh, companies and businesses hiring our graduates satisfied with the uh, the curriculum that they're receiving, et cetera? So they, they need to be involved uh, heavily in, in that type of work. Uh, you can require additional program coordinator responsibilities to meet the unique needs of your particular program. Uh, but you need to list those responsibilities briefly on the program coordinator appointment form. Uh, graduate program coordinators, there are going to be some additional responsibility as outlined by the graduate school, and we've included a few more of those that are listed here uh, on that uh, program coordinator appointment form for graduate programs. Okay. So you can see the process here. Uh, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to get the appropriate uh, program coordinator appointment form, whether it's an undergraduate program or a graduate program. We've got two different forms. Uh, you're going to fill that out. I'll talk to you about that in just a moment. Then you're going to obtain the faculty signature on that form so that the uh, faculty member understands their, their responsibilities. And then you're going to forward that form onto your college uh, dean's office uh, for review. So each college has identified a um, associate dean who's going to be responsible for reviewing those. So you just need to send that form to them. They will uh, then review that form and either approve it or send it back to you with a denial of, uh, based on this policy. So the second step, uh, the college dean uh, will review and can either approve or deny as I just mentioned. Uh, and then uh, the third step, if the uh, form is for a graduate program, then your college dean will forward that form to the graduate school for review. And the dean of the graduate school, again, can either approve or deny. And if they deny, they will send it back uh, to the college. And then step four, uh, the dean, whether it's either the uh, college dean or the graduate school, will then forward the um, form to me uh, for final review and I'll look at it and either approve or deny uh, the appointment as well. My uh, denial of a program is limited to just failure to adhere to the policy. I am not involved in anything dealing with your um, responsibilities other than the three uh, that I've listed up there that all program coordinators have to have. Uh, I'm, I'm not involved in, in evaluating anything else that you add to that form, so I just want that to be clear. My denial would only be in the case of, you know, uh, this faculty member is not qualified to teach at all levels within the program. That's not going to be something that we can, we can have. So I'm, I'm going to just look for adherence to the policy. And then I'm going to maintain a list of these um, program coordinators and digital measures. Uh, so we will be able to generate a report every year or as needed uh, of who our program coordinators are, uh, how we can contact them if we need to, uh, and we should be good to go then for SAC COC. So that's the program policy. If you have any questions about the policy, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, now let's talk a little bit about uh, what you're receiving. You, re you have received a list of programs under your purview uh, as an Excel spreadsheet that are going to require you to identify a program coordinator for. So when you get this list, it will only be for your school. You're not going to get the entire thing. So if you were the director for the Center for Science and Math Education, you would only receive this, this piece of it. Um, and so you would need to uh, identify a program coordinator for the Science Education MS and the Science Education uh, PhD programs, uh, so all of these things right in here have to be identified. And again, it could be the same person. It may make sense in this particular uh, case. If there are any minors listed in here, for right now we are going to uh, ignore minors. So don't, don't focus on anything that might be a minor. I don't think there's any minors in this particular list, but should there be, we're, we're just not going to pay attention to minors right now. However, if you have something that you get that's highlighted in green, you need to read what is in red and uh, get in touch with us here in Institutional Effectiveness. Get in touch with Catherine Lowry or myself and we will uh, um, 
coach you, if you will, on the things that need to be done this academic year to help clean up the inventory. So these things that are highlighted in green are things that need to be done this academic year. Okay, uh, So you're going to be receiving uh, this column uh, as a uh, as a table for the things that you need to complete uh, this academic year. So that, that's the Excel sheet that you'll be uh, receiving. Again, you won't be receiving everything, you'll just be receiving the stuff that is, that is in, your, in your wheelhouse, so to speak. So now that takes us to our program coordinator appointment forms. We have two of them. We have one for undergraduate and one for graduate. The one for undergraduate just says program coordinator approval form. Uh, whoever fills it out will need to type their name in here. It could be your uh, office administrative assistant, uh, it could be a faculty member, uh, whoever. Uh, and then, of course, it will need to have the school director's signature and date. Uh, if that faculty member has a joint appointment, that is a, that they have a joint appointment across two schools, then both uh, school directors will need to sign this form before moving on because uh, working as a program coordinator takes uh, a significant amount of time and I think both uh, school directors will need to be able to agree uh, that that individual will, will be able to do that. Uh, you'll then mark whether or not the faculty member has been promoted in rank at USM. Uh, almost always this should be marked yes, but in, the, in certain cases there may be situations where uh, no is appropriate. And if no is the uh, answer here, you need to attach a memo outlining the need for an exception. And the dean must approve exception memos. They have to sign off on these. The actual dean, not the associate dean, but the dean has to sign off on these exception memos. The reason we have this is because people who haven't undergone a promotion at USM in rank um, are fairly uh, new to the to uh, USM, and so throwing them into a program coordinator situation may not be uh, the fairest thing in the world to do. However, you may have hired somebody who was a uh, you know full professor at another institution. You brought them in specifically to be a program coordinator. That is a perfectly legitimate reason for an exception, and so you would just need to outline uh, the need for that and get the dean to approve that. Um, so you would attach your memo to this as you send it to the dean's office. The dean would then sign off on it if they approve it. If they don't agree with it, they'll send it back to you and ask for additional justification or have a conversation with you, whatever the case may be. Uh, it's then going to go to the office of the dean. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the associate dean will either approve or deny and date, and then it'll come to me where I will either approve or deny. And then uh, date this as well. So this is where uh, you as a, a uh, director are going to fill out, uh, spend quite a bit of time filling out the uh, information here. Um, so the faculty information, you're going to give us the faculty name, their IMPL ID, you're going to give us their role title as program coordinator. You can just call it program coordinator, but you may have a special title that you're using for this individual within your school's context. Uh, so just give us whatever uh, title of the role is for them. You're going to list their highest degree, their highest degrees major, and then you're going to ask the faculty member to sign off on this after you've completed all of this information. So you'll actually need to get a signature of the faculty member here. Um, you'll notice we have some one, you know, some things that are referenced here that you can um, uh, look at here. You're then going to list the programs that this individual is going to be a uh, coordinator for and the level. Um, since this is for the undergraduate, the only thing that's appropriate here would be the baccalaureate level or badges. So I need to change that before I send this out to you. So you'll just see either baccalaureate or badge or minor. Uh, and so you would, you would list that as the program level if it's a standalone minor. And then in responsibilities, do not delete one through three. Again, one through three are those that I, I listed before. Everybody has to have these, but then you can list as many other responsibilities as you need to here in column four. Uh, and again, just kind of bullet point it. You don't have to write complete sentences. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be extraordinarily detailed. It just has to uh, be good enough that they understand what their responsibility is going to be. Okay, so I mean, if it was uh, 
you know, they, they had the uh, responsibility of um, conducting uh, employer surveys. You could just write, you know, conducting employer survey, something along those lines. Okay, so that's the undergraduate program appointment form. And of course, we have one for graduate programs. Now, we have two forms because there's a little bit of a different um, workflow. Uh, as you can see, the form looks almost identical. Um, so I won't go through in detail, but what you'll see is that now the dean of the graduate school has been included in the approval process. Uh, so everything's the same up until here, then it's the dean of the graduate school, and then the dean of the graduate school will send that on to me. And also you can see that there are some additional responsibilities. So don't delete one through six. Okay, one through six are required for all graduate uh, program coordinators. So the first three are the same as for the undergraduate program coordinators, but four, five, and six uh, are actually coming from the graduate school. So they expect that graduate program coordinators chair the admissions committee, that those program coordinators actually serve as liaisons to the graduate school for the program, and that uh, these uh, graduate program coordinators actually report on the program milestones uh, as the uh, graduate school needs that to be done. So again, then you can add any additional responsibilities that you need to add uh, in column four. Just feel free to just add as many numbers as you need. Um, other than that, it's, it's basically the same form. Again, if that individual happens to have a joint appointment, both school directors need to sign off. If they haven't received a rank and promotion, then a, the dean will need to approve that memo. And here it's the college dean, not the dean of the graduate school. Okay, So when we're talking about exception memos and that kind of stuff, we're always talking about your college dean uh, for their primary appointment. So uh, just keep all that in mind. If you have any questions about how to complete this, uh, feel free to reach out to me directly. Uh, my office number is 64714. Be happy to take any phone calls or you can just email me douglas.masterson at usm.edu. Uh, we are rolling this out. Uh, soon you'll be receiving this as an email and uh, we uh, expect all of these to be submitted to your dean's office by October 1st for the things that are listed on the table that you'll receive as an attachment to the email. So all of that needs to be in the dean's office by October 1st. That'll get the ball rolling, so sometime by mid-October we should have all of these in my office, and if we don't, we will be getting uh, back in touch with you and um, trying to get all of these program coordinators identified and uh, get us in a, a better situation for understanding where, who is our program coordinators from a SAC COC uh, perspective. So I hope you have a, a great week, and I will see you all later.